My first guest this morning is giving us a taste of Nova Scotia. Seton Schaus's new cookbook memoir, it's a cookbook memoir, which is something you don't ever really hear about. It's called From the Hill by the Sea, and it's giving us some delicious food for thought on foraging, farming, fishing, and fermenting. And Seton joins me now. Welcome to New Day. Thank you. We are so excited to have you here. What are we making today? We're making a black sea bass tartare with a citrus broth. Okay, and I'd never heard of sea bass tartare ever, but I think this is cool. We have tuna tartare, why not sea bass tartare? Of course, it's a What's, little lighter. It's lighter, that's what I was gonna ask you what the difference was. Okay, so how do we get started? Okay, first we're gonna make the, uh, the citrus broth. Okay. Um, Japanese call it a ponzu. Um, this is kind of my version of it. So we're gonna add uh, some Nova Scotia kelp. Okay. Um, you can get this on the west coast, east coast. Kelp kind of grows around the world. I, it's um, interesting because I always think of kelp as just this kind of sea trash. You see it, you walk over it, but uh, this is amazing, amazing flavor and it's great for you as well. Okay. So we'll put about half of this in the pot. Okay, all righty. Half of it, all right. Yeah, it's a few, few pieces. There you go. You can't really put too much, so. All right. <laughs> and then? Then we're going to put some scallions. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, so pretty, actually, this situation in here. One, one garlic clove, just crushed. Just crushed, okay. A uh, little bit of a sugar, raw sugar. Raw sugar. Right. All the whole thing? About half of that, yes. Okay, so. half of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is uh, white, white soy sauce, about a quarter cup white soy sauce. All of this? Yes. All right. All of this. This is uh, Marin, Japanese cooking wine, sweet wine. Put all of that. What's the difference between white soy sauce and regular? Uh, white soy sauce is higher higher amount of uh, wheat, so it's wheat and soybeans that ah, are fermented together. Okay. Um, so it's higher amount of wheat, which makes it lighter, a little bit uh, a little bit smoky, kind of when it when it's when it's finished. Oh, all right. Yes. Okay. All so right. We'll, we'll let that uh, come come to a simmer. All right. Um, and uh, as soon as that comes to a simmer, we'll turn it off. We'll let it kind of uh, come to room temperature, and then we're going to add in some orange juice. Uh, lemon juice and lime juice. Okay, we'll copy this that. This is citrus part of part of the dish. All right. Um, while that while that's cooking, uh, we'll dice dice the uh, sea bass. All right. Um, so this is black sea bass uh, from uh, from the North Atlantic. Um, here here on the West Coast, uh, there's not black sea bass, but you can substitute uh, halibut's great. Of course, the halibut here is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, rockfish, I love love the Pacific rockfish as well. You can do a tartare with that as well. And make sure. And here he says. Make sure your seafood is sustainable. Because it's so important that we focus exactly. on that, right? Wild, sustainable seafood is, is the best. Yeah. Um, um, so is there a key to dicing fish? Um, sharp knife. Sharp knife is kind of the key to, yeah, to, dice, to dicing most okay. things. Um, so we're going to mix it in the bowl. All right. Um, so basically add the bass to the bowl. Add the bass to the bowl. We can do that. Um, how, how how important is it when you are cooking with seafood that you are making sure that it's it's the freshest of the fresh? I mean, obviously you don't want it not to be fresh, but I mean, you want to make buy it and make it that day, right? Of course, exactly. Yes, and also trust trust your fishmonger. Trust where you're getting the fish from mm -hmm. that it's that it's fresh fresh to begin with before mm -hmm. you even got it. Okay. Um, that's that's one key. All right. So we we have the bass in the bowl. Uh, we're going to put in some uh, about a half of a Fresno pepper. So okay. you can put that whole amount. How spicy is the Fresno pepper? Medium, medium spicy. It's a great, great color. I love it because it's uh, got a good, it's good, good, uh, okay. good has heat, but not too much. Um, okay. So fermented seaweed. Fermented um, so seaweed. So you can make it yourself. There is a recipe in the book, um, or you, you can buy it from a company called Atlantic Sea Farms, which is okay. a great company in Maine. Uh, some diced cucumber, probably about half that cucumber. Okay. Oh, you said half. That's Sorry. all right. Yeah, we, I mean, we love cucumber. I do love cucumber. Here's some chives. Maybe you'd half the chives. Okay. And. The fermented seaweed. What is that? What's the kind of flavor with that? Um, it's very, very light. Um, so if you like um, uh, kimchi, mm -hmm. it's not as strong as kimchi. So okay. it is fermented. The kimchi is fermented, but it's not quite as strong. Okay. It's, it's light, and it breaks down the structures in the seaweed to make it more tender as well. Interesting. The vinegar reaction with the with the cellulose. Sure. I think that's fantastic. So we're gonna add a couple turns of black pepper. That's great. Okay. Some uh, sea salt. Just a pinch. Just maybe a pinch. Okay, not yes, the whole exactly. thing. Not obviously. the whole thing. I and don't you've think used so. Malden salt here. It looks no, like. No, this is actually our own sea salt. We make you it. You make your own sea salt. Uh, for Mont well, water from Montauk, we gather oh. and dehydrate it into <laughs> sea salt. That's insane. Yeah. Is that in the book too? It is actually. You, it he's is. teaching you how to make <laughs> sea salt. How cool is yeah. that? Okay. Okay. So now we're going to add the broth. So the broth is not finished yet. So we have okay. some that we made uh, All right. earlier. Did you? Um, yep. It can be, that can all can go okay. directly in. Wait, I'm going to just taste the broth. May I really? Sure. I just want to. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is so yummy. Oh, it's light, but it's got such depth in the flavor. Mm. Yeah, it's, okay. it's citrusy, it's a little salty from the soy, but a little olive oil, good olive oil. Okay. Nice California olive oil. Um, and then we're just gonna mix that, mix that together. Okay. 
Olive oil is also key, right? As, as much as getting the right fish, the right ingredients, olive oil can make or break a dish. Exactly. Great olive oil is key. You can have an olive oil that's too spicy sometimes or, mm -hmm. or kind of not enough flavor. I like that this one's from California. I did not, you know, you think typically, you know, Italy, but this is neat. Um, as you're starting to plate that, and before we get into tasting it, because I can't wait to, tell me about some of the other things that people can find in your book, because it's not just a cookbook, but it is a memoir as well. And why did you decide that format? So it kind of came came while while writing the cookbook, kind of the stories, uh, creating a memoir of stories of my my childhood, kind of growing mm -hmm. up in Nova Scotia, very, very rural Nova Scotia. Um, so that's kind of how it kind of enveloped as I was writing the writing the book. But the idea for the book was to be had to have, make a north north kind of eastern coastal cuisine mm -hmm. kind of cookbook to bring people out of their comfort zone. Um, so let people know that there's a lot of wild ingredients in your backyard, especially here in the Pacific Northwest, mm -hmm. um, where people can find their own items and some, some different recipes you can use to, to do something with those, as well as coastal ingredients that some people aren't as familiar cooking with, like seaweeds. Seaweeds and, and making your own sea salt. I love that. The Northeast meets the Northwest, and we are so delighted um, for everything that you've created and shown us today. And speaking of which, you have a few other things here. Um, you talked about fermenting seaweed, we talked about making sea salt, but this is something else that is in the book, a recipe. What is this? Yeah, so this is a fermented uh, hot sauce. Um, so there's no added vinegar to it. It's just the, this is the sourness comes from the fermentation process of a lacto-fermentation. So that's kind of salt and water. Interesting. Um, so it just takes salt water, some peppers, any other aromatics, put a little shallots, little carrots. Okay. Um, and you let it ferment for two weeks. In incredible. All right, and then finally, the vermouth you have here. Yes, so this is a sweet vermouth. Um, so sweet vermouth is kind of an infusion of different botanicals mm -hmm. uh, with white wine and uh, spirits. So I, I use brandy uh, and sherry. So I okay. use uh, some white wine, brandy, sherry, and then all kinds of uh, edibles um, and botanicals. So juniper, as you, as you see there, wild juniper oh, wow. that uh, they pick, um, some orange peel, uh, there's sea buckthorn in there, there's sumac. Uh, and this is in the book. You're teaching people how it you is, can make yes, this. Yes, yes. You know, I, I've always, people always like to make the beer. My, my stepdad likes to make the beer. You know, that never, this appeals to me. The making the sweet vermouth appeals to me. Um, and also, this book is just so appealing overall. Look at how beautiful this cover is. It already looks like an instant classic in anyone's home. What a beautiful gift to give folks uh, for the holidays. All right, now I'm ready to try this Great, delicious perfect. dish. Um, here's, here's one that's finished. Okay, so this is fancy that you would see in a restaurant, right? Yeah, so this uh, this is a Espelette cracker we put on top that we make at our restaurant Halifax in, mm -hmm. on the East Coast, but um, you can serve it with some fresh baguette as well. Just break, yeah, break that. And, so you uh, could, yeah, so this could be as fancy as you want or as casual as you want, depending on where you, where you are in your day. Correct, exactly. Mm. Oh my gosh. There's so much flavor in that. Oh my gosh. I can't believe you packed that much flavor into one little fish. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for taking the time to, to show us all this, to, to prepare everything. Thank you very much. Thank From the Northeast to the Northwest, we appreciate you. Thank you.